Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to yet another video. My name is Tyler. I'm Kalisha. And on this channel, we like to have a lot of fun and talk all things relationships. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything, and then sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy the video. So guys, real quick, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, we just wanna ask you guys for some grace because we're trying out a new camera setup right now. You know, we, we upgraded a little bit, got a little microphone on thing on top. We're not too sure how it's gonna look or, or what's really what we're really even doing. So we're just asking for some grace as uh, you know, we try out this new setup. Yeah, but as you could read in the title, today we are going to give our seven best relationship advice. A lot of people have been asking us and we're here to deliver. Right. So, I mean, this is coming from our relationship, what we've learned. We think it's applicable to all. So, I mean, let's get into it. Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, so you've heard me say this so many times. If you've watched our other videos, if you haven't, you need to go back and watch them. <laughs> but you've heard me say this so many times. Number one, I would say, is learn each other's love language. It's so essential to learn each other's love languages because that's the way that they need to receive love. Right. A lot of times we have our ideas of how we think that we need to deliver love. If I feel like, you know, I need acts of service to understand what love is and for you to give me love, then Tyler doesn't have the right to tell me that's not a how I need my love right and then vice versa if he needs something I don't have the right to say well I mean I don't really consider that to be love so right no right and it would be natural um, like for example I'll tell you one of mine is through gifts mm -hmm. right so the reason why it's important to learn your partners is because just because as she just said just because that's mine doesn't mean that's hers right so I need to make sure that I learn what the way that she receives love even though mine may be different, so then I can meet her where her needs are. Right, yeah. It's like, you guys don't understand. It's so important to meet people. Yeah. Those are my birds, I'm sorry. Those are my birds. <laughs> We're just gonna wait. There we go. Anyways, so, yeah, but it's so important. Learn each other's love language, love them according to it, and just keep doing that. Like throughout the entire relationship, don't stop. That's right, that's right. And number two, we're not gonna take up too much time in your video today, we're kinda run, gonna run through these quick. Uh, but number two is to not only forgive, but to drop it, mm. right? And the reason I say this is because obviously everybody makes mistakes because nobody is perfect. Right. Um, but I personally believe that the only way a relationship is gonna be able to thrive is if the forgiveness is there, um, and then if it's dropped and moved forward from. Right? Because I'm sure all of us can probably agree that if something is hanging over our head or if a mistake that we made is kind of just being held like right in front of us that we can't ever look past it, it's going to be hard for us to grow, right? Right. Um, so I say this both to men and women because I find both of us, um, you know, have time, have done this in times where it's like we say we forgive, but then we don't really like act like it or we don't really move like it. Um, and I think that for the growth of the relationship, yeah. um, if change is genuinely there and if things are genuinely transformed, uh, then this is something that is really important um, to kind of, you know, put the mistakes in the rear view mirror and be able to continue to walk together in unity, uh, walk together in strength um, and walk together through any issues that that end up coming up. Uh, in the future yeah for sure because unforgiveness is a huge hindrance to a relationship right. like it's a complete roadblock because you think you can keep going further but then in the back of your mind you're still playing out whatever it is and i mean the reality is nobody's perfect so there's always going to be mistakes right and I do believe that if there is something bothering you, you do need to discuss it with your partner. 100%. So that you're able to, it, it helps you to move on. Well, see, that actually comes into what our next point is. Okay. Right? And Good our time. next point is uh, communication, as, mm. as, as cliche as it sounds, right but it's important to not only communicate when things are bad but it's also important to communicate when things are good yes right yeah. because if you communicate only when things are bad then it's going to be hard for an individual to to realize when things are going well so to know what to keep doing and what to kind of keep expanding on for lack of a better term right so you know but as you were saying it's important to talk about the things when there is a problem um so an agreement and uh, a, a common understanding 
can really be met. Therefore, yeah. both of you guys can walk forward together rather than one person being held back by like a bitter and, and upset feeling and the other person doesn't even know anything that's going on. Yeah, and you know what? Communication is important in every type of relationship that we have. Right. Friendship within our parents or within our families, yeah. um, relationships. Absolutely. It's important in every aspect. You need to know how to communicate. You need to be able to express your feelings and and just genuinely have conversations with people because, I mean, what is any relationship without communication? Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely, absolutely. And that brings us, um, you know, to the next point. And this one I was kind of figuring, I was trying to figure out how to word it. Um, so just bear with me, but basically paying attention to little details, mm -hmm. right? So for example, I'll give you an example with Kalisha. As energetic as she is, she's a natural introvert, Yeah. right? So, you know, for me, it's important as her husband to keep an eye out for when the introversion is starting to kind of creep up for lack of a better term, right? So in the sense of, you know, if, if I see her getting tired or if I see her kind of closing her shell for a little bit because it's been such a busy, such an energetic, mm. such a loud day, um, for me, I need to be able to, to really not only just witness it, but understand what's going on so then therefore I can act accordingly to help her. So for a, an example, yesterday um, we went bowling and by the time that the bowling was done, like I could see, through, like I could see through her in the sense of being like, okay, you know what? She's tired and she's she needs to kind of like recharge a little bit, yeah. which is 100% natural, right? Yeah. So don't, don't let anybody tell you that it's not, but that's a topic for a different day. Um, but I could see that she started to kind of need to recharge. So I was like, okay, you know what? Can I get you anything? Is there any way that I can help? Um, you know, we'll just sit, we were just sitting there on the bench and I'd have my arm around her, just kind of hugging her just to like, you know, bring a calm, bring a yeah. standstill. Cause I'm sure for anybody, like I'm not an introvert, but I'm sure for anybody that is, you would be able to empathize with that need for just quiet, calm and chilled out for a little bit to bounce back from all the energy that was just given. Right. So yeah. Um, you know, for anybody whose partner is introvert, I would just say it's very important to keep an eye out for the little details on things like that, uh, because I feel that's something that, although it seems small, um, can really actually draw you two closer together because it's creating more of an understanding right. um, on how the other individual faces um, just day-to-day -day life and different situations throughout life. Well, and even when you're looking at little things, like for example, if you love surprises that may be a little thing to me but a huge thing to him right so it's like you want to make sure that you are paying attention to all the details so that you can give them everything mm -hmm. they need so if you like surprises guess what i'm going to plan surprises to make right. sure that you are still content and happy in the relationship Absolutely. so there's there's little things you can do i like adventures if tyler was to surprise me with an adventure i'm excited about it he likes gifts whatever it is whatever it is that that person likes you need to know them so that you're able to right. care to that but um you just need to pay attention to those little details because i'm telling you the little details to you are huge to them right absolutely all right baby go let's give us our next point okay so our next point is do not do anything that your partner would not be okay with you doing anything so i mean I know a lot of people, they'll say, um, well, I'm sure that so-and-so would be okay with me doing this. Did, did you have a conversation with them? Mm, that's good. Because sometimes, sometimes we can be guilty of holding things in and saying like, like making it look like it doesn't bother me, you know? Like, yeah, I, I, Put I'm it not, too, yeah, yeah, I'm not it too bothered by it. It's okay, Tyler can do, but inside I'm raging. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. is this something that you communicated back to like, what was that number two? Something like that. Um, is this something that you communicated and you're able to actually understand that this does not bother them? Cause yeah. chances are, if you could think in your head that, you know, if somebody did that to me, I'd be upset. Chances are they would be upset too. And don't, don't do anything that would bother you. Don't yeah. do it. Because yeah. if you wouldn't like somebody doing that to you, what sense does it make to do it to somebody else? Absolutely. I just think that's disrespectful. Well, yeah, and, and realistically, that's what it comes down to is a disrespect because at that point, you're putting expectations on another individual mm -hmm. that you're not willing to meet yourself. Right. Right, and at that point, now you're looking at, 
you know, two different, like it's a double-edged sword really, because if they do some, if they see you do something and they just automatically think that it's okay, but then you don't like when they do it, but the only reason they're doing it is because they saw you do it. So it's like, it's really a double-edged sword in the sense of- You know what of, too? When you start doing that, it, it that's gonna put a strife in your relationship. 100%. Cause at this point, it seems like you're babbling each other. Right. Like now you're just trying to like one up. Right. It's like right. that, mm, right. that's, that's right. a no for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't there do needs, that. There definitely needs to be a mutual. And this, like you said, this really goes back with communicating because what is okay, what is not okay, right? It's not about, oh, well, uh, my wife said this, so yeah, she's the boss. Or, no, I'm the man of the house. I wear the pants. So what I say goes, no, 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 no. Like get, get rid of all of those just terrible stereotypes because realistically, it's mindsets like that that cause the rate of divorce to be higher than yeah. the rate of successful marriages nowadays, yeah. right? So let's just get rid of that for uh, for a second. Um, and you know what? Let's just understand that we're both on an even playing field. Yep. We're both taking on this life together, right? The moment we got married, we became one. But even for those who are not married yet and are in the courting or, or the dating or getting to know each other thing, right? You need to set these um, understandings and set up these boundaries from the get-go um, because just to expect somebody to know it and to expect somebody to abide by it without having the opportunity to learn why okay why do you feel that way right when there's when there's a more emotional understanding from it then there could be a more of a, an emotional connection uh, which will help it be more successful in the future right and, so and here's your freebie for the day because this isn't even part of the seven but he said a great thing and I'm gonna hammer it because I think it's so important in every relationship boundaries yeah you need them if you don't have boundaries in a relationship you're probably gonna hear me say this a million times because i just so strongly believe it if you don't have boundaries in a relationship any of them then somebody's gonna push them because you're boundaryless 100 you need to have they're so essential people think boundaries are something that like traps you in and it's like oh well now you're allowing me to you're not allowing me to do anything no 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 boundaries are allowing you to do things with precaution. Right, right. And right. that's so essential, but that's for another day. That was a freebie for you. Let's roll <laughs> to the next one, please. Uh, Don't get me started. So the next one is, we got two left guys, just two left. Uh, the next one is pick your battles because not everything needs to be a huge fight. Mm -hmm. um, don't get me wrong. There are things that arguments are gonna come up and they're gonna be very valid arguments. Yes. Right, and at that point, it's not even about like we're not gonna sit here and tell you, oh, don't argue, everything's gonna be okay. No, 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 it's arguments right. are gonna happen. Yeah, That's not real not life. Real life. Mm -hmm. But another freebie for the day is what is the difference between right and wrong when it comes to this is the way that you argue. Yes. There's a very big difference. You don't need to be calling each other out of your names. You don't need to be disrespecting each other, yelling at each other. You don't need to be calling Physical. like not, none of that. You know what I'm saying? That's where the difference goes from right to wrong. But when it does come to arguments, um, one, not everything needs to be an argument, and two, what is really worth fighting for, right? Because if something is bothering you, at that point, it is definitely something that needs to be communicated about. Yes. But does it need to be fought about? There's two very different things. Yes. Right? So, you know, I think this is where you'll also be able to see um, how much respect you guys have in the relationship. Because, like, this is something that both Kalisha and I have really been working on like within our first year and a yeah. little bit of being married is mm -hmm. figuring out what's worth a fight and what's not. Um, because, you know, obviously when arguments and stuff like that, tensions rise, people's feelings get like people are upset, people are emotional, all this type of stuff. Um, but not every issue that arises needs to turn into something like that. Yeah. But when an issue does arise, it needs to be able to be communicated because yes. if it can't be communicated, then as we said before, then no solution is gonna be found, obviously, swept because we're not talking rug. about it. Swept it's gonna be swept rug. under the rug and anytime something gets swept under the rug, that doesn't mean it's not there anymore, it's just hiding for now. Right? It'll come out. 100%, mm -hmm. right? So that's where we believe uh, it's so important to, to pick your battles, um, yeah. but to really have a genuine respect for one another. Again, whether you're dating, whether you're married, whether you're um, you know, single, realistically this works, especially for us young people, because I feel like for us, uh, it really comes down to, I mean, I know even with us in particular, is that we've learned things that we don't necessarily want to implement in our relationship. Absolutely. There's a lot of things that we learn along the way right. that um, aren't necessarily healthy. Just because you've learned it, there. listen, listen. Yeah. Not everything that we learn is our 
fault. Yeah, yeah, We've been so, taught things as kids, yeah, so whatever. We see things on TV. We see However, on it is your responsibility to unlearn it once you realize that it's unhealthy. That's good. That it's toxic, right. that it does not help you further in life. It is your, hear me, I'm going to come closer. <laughs> it is your responsibility to unlearn any toxic behavior. Yeah. I'm sorry if you learned things from when you were young and it was hard. Listen, in the way the world works right now, like you can't even go to a Walmart magazine section and not end up learning something that can be harmful oh, to your relationship. Oh, of course. You like that's that, just the world. You know the what? In works. life, as you grow, you learn things. Yeah. Whether you want to or not, you learn things. Right. However, if you start to realize this is toxic, this is unhealthy, this doesn't better me, this is bad for me, it is your responsibility to unlearn it once you grow up. Not gonna say it's gonna be easy, but you gotta work on it and unlearn some of the bad behaviors and bad habits that we've picked up. Yeah, that's right. All right, we got one more, guys. Our last one, and and last, definitely not least, this mm -hmm. is actually the most important one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is keeping your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right, and the a big reason why I say that is because obviously, like, what's impossible for man is possible for God. We, right. we see that in the scripture. Yeah, but you can't change your partner; only he can. Yes. Right. So Woo! a word. Uh, listen, I'll use a I'll use word. us. Right. Is there was a time, like there was a, a long period of time where I was doing things that I shouldn't be doing, right? And Kalisha would try to implement the change on me, and it just wouldn't work because I was. Yeah, already you stuck in my listen, own mind. Listen, right? you can't change your partner. Right, but it takes if there's a true encounter with Jesus. So even if your partner is is moving sideways or is doing things that you don't like, that is something bring to God. Communicate yes. with them, but bring it to God. Because I'll tell you this: when a true encounter with Jesus happens, nothing can stop the transformation that's going to follow it. Listen, you need to learn to fight your battles on your knees and with your Bible. Right. Pray. Use scripture, speak it into existence. You know, just say, you know, you say this. This is how I believe of my husband. I pray this. Right. Speak it into existence over their life. Continue to pray. Literally pray, 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 pray for change. Because I'm telling you, at the end of the day, it's only going to be God. That's right. That's going to work on their heart. You can plant the seed, but God, yeah, God will deal with the rest. Well, see, and there's one more scripture that came to mind too is, is, when you're building your relationship, do you want to build it on sand or do you want to build it on a rock? Mm -hmm. Right? And if you build it on the way that the world operates and if you build it on what a, what the world calls a good relationship, you're building it on sand and because it's constantly changing, uh, what's oh, yeah. cool is no longer cool. What's in is no longer in. What's out is now in. And it's it's a constant it's a constant circular rotation of just foolishness. Yeah. Right? But if you really build your foundation on the word of God with Jesus um, and you build it on a foundation of rock, well then, even when storms come, you're gonna be you're gonna be able to make it through. Not yep. not saying it's not gonna get ugly. Yeah. Not saying yeah, that there's yeah. not gonna be times where it's hurt, but the the house, the foundation of the relationship will still be standing um, when it's all said and done. All right, y'all. So that concludes our video for today. We really hope that these seven pieces of advice um, are able to help you guys. We do not claim to be relationship gurus. No. To be honest, when I see a lot of people, like I don't need to call any type of names or something like that just because that's that's not the message that we're trying to send on this channel. But my opinion is a lot of these relationship gurus end up having a whole lot of uh, their own personal relationship issues that they're not willing to open up about because they want to seem to know it all. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're not claiming to be that. Uh, we really don't want to be that. No. Um, it's just... We're using our story for his glory. And if we can use the things that we've learned to help others out there uh, build stronger relationships from themselves, then that's exactly what we're going to do. So please don't take this as a way of us thinking that we know it all or we have all the answers. Um, we're still learning. We're and we're going to day by day. Listen, if you don't think that you'll go your entire relationship still learning, right. uh, like, I don't know. Maybe 100%. You got to keep learning. Yeah, 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 and you got to be willing to keep learning. Right. Like you can't. Can't stay stagnant, man. Right. So just please understand the heart that's behind this video. Um, and if there's any any special prayer requests, uh, do us a favor, comment down below. Let us know one what what's something that you're working on in your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you know what's something that you know you find for yourself. We're not gonna talk about your partner. We're gonna do some self reflection today. <laughs> and what is something that you personally want to work on uh, for your relationship circles? 
Um, and then if there's anything that we could pray for, if, if there's any conversations that need to be had, our Instagram DMs are always open. Um, you'll be able to find that in the description as well. If you have any questions, um, want prayer for anything, then please come hit us up mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be happy to help. But yeah. until next time, that concludes another video. So here's your verse of the day. Later, y'all. I am your.